So welcome to uh, Barry Smith, founder of Michaela School, former head teacher of Great Yarmouth Charter Academy and currently regional director of CST, uh, a small trust based in London. Barry, thanks for, uh, thanks for talking to us today. I have to correct you there, oh. okay? <laughs> Catherine would kill me for how you've just introduced me there. So we were, I was part of the founding team, part of the founding SLT at, at Michaela. Okay. Um, so there were, there were five teachers when we started and 120 kids. But, right. Uh, it seems a lifetime ago. Only six Sorry, years. What did I call you? Did I call you the founder? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. So one Just of the founders. So careful. A founder. Yeah. A founder. Sorry. Yes. No. I mean, and obviously Catherine Burble Singh is the is the person that we all uh, connect with the school. But um, you were there right from the beginning, Barry. Um, of course. So let's let's just briefly. What was that? What was that like to be involved in the start? I mean, firstly, the startup of any school is quite an exciting thing that very few teachers get to experience. But the startup. I mean, did you know right at the beginning that this was going to be very different? Yes. Um, God, the way I think about things, Catherine and I agree on lots of things. I think a lot like Catherine. I said there are areas where we differ. Obviously, yeah. uh, we're very different people. But um, no, I mean, I'd been, God, I'd been teaching for about 16, 17 years before I joined, um, uh, I was going to say Charter, was before I joined Michaela. Yeah. Um, I'd been teaching teachers for 10 years, um, traveling the country, yeah. visiting lots of schools, teaching lots of teachers. Uh, it was Joe Kirby, probably, via Twitter, put me in touch with um, Catherine, and that was it. I liked what she had to say. Um, but I remember, I always tell this tale, because repeat myself a lot. Um, I remember seeing Catherine on TV, I think it's 2010, the Conservative Party conference, I'm yes. watching her on the news, I'm there with a glass of wine going, yes, yes, yes. And uh, yeah, so I very much agree with the ideas, the concept. Right, okay. So, and, and so that, 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 those first few years then, being part of the school, I, I think I came to visit Michaela in the first year of operation and saw you in all, in your pomp in the classroom, yeah. uh, with uh, children, you know, year seven children speaking what appeared to me as someone with, you know, a smattering of French, appeared to me quite sophisticated language skills. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, do you want to, can you tell us a little bit about how you go about that sort of thing? Um, most... Everything you're told, everything you're told, I'm going to say, did, didn't you write a book called something like, what if everything you've been told is wrong, something like that? Something like that. Something like that, yeah. I tend to think like that. Um, I think the orthodoxy and oh, this this is good practice in teaching generally is wrong, and I certainly think the orthodoxy of this is good practice in NFL is wrong. Mm. So, for years and years and years, I've gone around the country promulgating. No, you don't. Long before we got rid of levels, um, I would say, look, you can do past reasons, opinions, future, subjunctive. You can do all sorts of amazing things with kids. And what's the question you always get? You know this because you've done inset. Um, yeah, but what will Ofsted say? Yeah. Whereas what was great about uh, Michaela was, it was, look at that, we're going to do what we believe in. And Catherine gave me a, a complete you know, free hand on how I was going to teach. I don't think she even knew I was going to teach French, but obviously the kids uh, responded incredibly well. Amazing language. I'm doing the same thing at HNS now with Hackney New School, where I am now. Um, you've got amazing kids, with fantastic accents. And uh, nobody can see them at the moment because it's all lockdown, but post lockdown, it'll be lovely for, for people to see the kids. Uh, but I just, I love the subject, it's a fascinating subject. I think the exam is bloody awful. I don't like teaching it in an exam, but I also, you've got to know how to take those boxes for the exam. So hence, from the very beginning, past reasons, opinions, future subjunctive. So I would always advocate, spend three years teaching the kid that language, and then you spend two years going, you see this crummy exam, the French isn't on. Oh my God, look at this exam, look at the hoops we've got to jump through. And uh, so, so that's my take on, on language teaching. Uh, well, you say that, so I think there's a bit of information missing there, Barry. So what is the, what is the secret to getting kids to speak French, uh, you know, with, with a degree of fluency and to have great accents and those sorts of things? What's your... Literacy is the key. The written word is the key. Um, you know, we're, we're fortunate, aren't we? It's the Roman alphabet. What do I say all the time? There's only 26 letters in the alphabet. It can't be that hard. And the French keep repeating the same letters all the time. And so you make kids incredibly vigilant. Uh, they pay attention to detail. So they're looking at those vowel combinations. Um, I don't want to go too much down because if anybody's not a language teacher, I'll go, oh, oh I'm really bored. But um, all the silent letters, we, we're, we're, we're very explicit how we teach them. All the showing kids, you know, learn a foreign language. It's, 
it's very repetitive. Language is incredibly repetitive. And there's no such thing as a new word. You think they're wrong, but they're not. They're just using the same letter combinations again and again and again. And when kids get that, the other day, I love this, I was so proud of my year seven the other day, um, Mr. Hussein came in. And I got the kids to say something silly in French about Mr. Hussein. Mr. Hussein's crazy, something like that. They love slacking myself to me. Um, and I just described him as Monsieur Hussein. And a kid goes, sir, sir, that's, that's wrong. Because you shouldn't say the letter H. It's Mr. Hussein. And then another kid went, but sir, it should be Monsieur Hussein. Because it's I-N at the end. So I love all of that. And it means that you can show kids a brand new language they haven't seen before. And they have a pretty good stab at pronouncing it. They won't always get it right. I won't always get it right, but they yeah. can have a pretty good stab. And that's, and, you know, if you want to motivate kids, you don't give them games. You don't really set your thoughts alight or juggle for them. If you want to motivate kids, you make sure that every lesson they leave thinking, whoa, I'm good at that. I'm good at that. You plan lessons so they feel accomplished. And, and that's what I do. I know what the high frequency errors are and I run towards the high frequency errors. I preempt those high frequency errors. And as a consequence, kids make rapid progress and they like it. So you've, you've talked, um, I, mean, I, I, gen, I mean, I'm not an MFL teacher. I find all that fascinating, I have to say. And when my, um, my, my daughter, I say did her GCSE in French, obviously she, was, she didn't, she was given a GCSE in French last year. And, uh, she she had she started that in year eight and she she taught she'd learned Spanish previously and she I think she found because French is obviously much more it's it's a much deeper orthography with with a, a less predictable link between the letters and sounds than Spanish. But you can teach you can teach kids those those patterns. Yeah, well that's it. And she she hadn't been and we sat yeah. down and did some basic mm. some my best guess on what phonics instruction in French yeah. might look like. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that held her in quite good stead. It's, I'm sure it would. Yeah. I'm sure it would. And I don't think you need to be too heavy handed about it, you know. No. In recent years, people have talked a lot about phonics, therefore there'll be teachers going, so now we will do a phonics lesson. Look, oh, it's one of those words with AU. Oh, it's one of those words with EU. Oh, it's one of those words with I double L. It's easy language, isn't it? And then I teach the kids to say, you know, in my opinion, the language French is logical. In fact, I would say that it isn't complicated. And it goes on. Yeah. You know, they, there's lots of back and forth where I'll say the English, they say the French. And I don't know what I'm going to say next, but I'm just recycling the, our core vocabulary. And the more core vocabulary you get, it goes off in multiple directions. And they're, oh, well, they're just amazed by themselves. And then you pick up on the accent. Every, despite my silly accent in English, <laughs> for an Englishman, my, yeah, for, my, for an Englishman, my French accent isn't bad. So I'm very, very picky with them as well. Yeah. And, a, and they look, they look, and they're not embarrassed. For a Welshman, you have a very strange accent. Yeah, but even, well, most of my adult life's been in Wales. Most of my adult yeah. life has been in Wales. Okay. So one of the things you said there about your French teaching is about running towards high frequency errors. Mm. And it strikes me as, in some way, that encapsulates something about your approach to school leadership as well, running towards mistakes. Running towards, running towards the obvious. It, right. it, it, I know what, what mistakes, what are the obvious mistakes a kid's going to make in French? I know what they're going to make, what mistakes they're going to make. So I'm going to teach, so those mistakes don't even happen. So what are the obvious things that go wrong in a school? Well, if anybody's applying for a, a job in a school, what is the first thing any teacher asks themselves? What's the behavior like in that school? So behavior, you get the behavior right. You protect the teachers, because if the teachers aren't protected, they don't stand a cat in the house chance. Um, you protect the teachers, then the t you know, if you'll be, if you're a teacher and you're in a school that's badly run, where the, the behavior is really, really bad, the culture is really bad, um, and teachers are routinely ignored, or, I don't think, to, in my experience, yes, teachers are sworn at, but they're not routinely sworn at, but they're routinely ignored, mm. uh, they're routinely treated with contempt by a lot of children. Um, that, that, that body language, that facial expression, that tone of voice, where kids are essentially telling the kid to, teach, uh, kids are essentially telling the teachers to, to go away in no certain terms. That is pretty common. Mm -hmm. um, and that can't be, that's very wary, you know. You've been teaching maths for six hours today, or English, or French, or history, or whatever you've been doing, and you're getting abuse like that. Out for an hour, a bell goes, then another bunch of kids. Nobody deserves that at work. Nobody deserves that. So that's the thing you sort out first. You sort out behavior. Um, there's lots of reasons why behavior is bad in schools. Um, yeah, so you can't, you can't do, now I'll do behavior and now I'll do teaching 
and now we'll do it a charter and if i ever do it again um i would do it again this way it, you've got to do everything in tandem you've got to look at the, the the delivery skills of the teacher you've got to look at their subject knowledge as well as the whole culture of the school in terms of uh, a behavior as well and what i talk about all the time i always talk about listen we've got to build a school and it's built upon genuine mutual respect. We've all seen it. We've all been in schools where the teachers are, some teachers are grumpy buggers, right? And they shouldn't be with kids. But we've all been in schools where teachers are, oh, little Johnny, okay, Johnny, super nice teacher. And Johnny's curling his lip. That's not right. So we're very much a charter uh, and very much at Hackney where we all know. It's, um, I'm very polite to you. You're very polite to me. And I would say to the kids, I want this school to be the most relaxed school in the country. And what I mean by that is, I want any adult to be able to go up to any kid and go, hello, miss, hello, sir, how are you? Because I tend to call kids, sir, miss. And I want the kid to come back with, oh, well, thanks, sir, how are you? Should I have a nice weekend? Yeah, I had a nice weekend. That's how it should be. It should never be that any teacher sees a naughty child and thinks, oh, shit, it's him. I'm going to look the other way. There are teachers all over the country that see naughty children in corridors or in the yard or at break or at lunch, and the teacher's thinking, it's not worth just look away i look away it's easier because the teachers are frightened and that nobody nobody can work like that so there you go that's that's my take on okay um, well, behavior management let let's um let's go back to something you said earlier so you said there's uh, there's lots of reasons why behavior is bad in school can we talk a, a little bit about some of those reasons why isn't behavior good enough you know i i think a lot of teachers lack self-respect uh, and I wonder if it's the, I wonder if it's all this culture where teachers are observed and tick, 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 you're a good teacher, you're a bad teacher. Um, you know, because I've always said, okay, I've done lots of CPD in my time, you've done lots of CPD. And you know what it's like, CPD providers, they, they, they live or they die on, on the strength of their feedback forms. You know, because if you get good feedback forms, then you're likely to get better, more business to, and the CPD trainers get all excited. Oh, I've got really good CP, um, feedback forms. You know, one day somebody tells you you're great, it doesn't mean to say you're great. One day if somebody tells you you're crap, it doesn't mean you're crap. You've got to have self-belief. And I think a lot of teachers don't have enough self-belief. I think, and after a while, you become institutionalized. Um, and when you're used to children talking to you badly, I think a lot of teachers begin to think, well, that's, that's really all I deserve. And that's not all you deserve. You deserve to be treated with respect. Everybody, genuine mutual respect. Um, I never buy into this, um, what do people say? They say, you've got to earn respect. No way. A charter at Michaela, now it's happening. We talk about steps all the time. We call people sir and miss. We say thank you. We say excuse me. We say please. And the essay is we smile. And what the smile means is, you go up to people, you're warm, you're welcoming, you're friendly. That should be the norm. Hello, Miss. How are you? Oh, well, thanks. How are you? At the end of lessons, you should say the uh, kids should say the teachers. Uh, thanks for the lesson, Miss. When you say them on Monday morning, they should say, "Did you have a nice weekend?" That's what you have to teach that. And I think in a lot of schools, they don't teach that. Uh, a lot of teachers feel as if they've been abandoned by their SLT. A lot of SLT spend a huge amount of time in offices looking at spreadsheets. No school was ever turned round by a spreadsheet. So. That's uh, that, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Okay, so that's an interesting that's an interesting thing. Talk a little bit about that idea of self respect. I've not I've not heard it put in quite that way before, and um, it sort of made me so it sort of made me think about some, something I've been reading recently about uh, about narcissism, which often mm. lots of people think of as you know loving yourself, but it's in fact the it's the externalization of your of your self worth, and that. Uh, and that's a that's a, a fascinating idea that the teachers value of themselves has been externalized to, to that extent that they're prepared to tolerate things that we wouldn't tolerate in other in other areas of society. You just wouldn't, would you? The, the way that kids will try to speak to adults in school, you wouldn't put up with that from somebody in the shop or in the street or or a colleague. No. You know, if you and I were talking to each other, you tell me something, I might not agree with you. And so we'll, we'll have a discussion. But if you say something I don't agree, <laughs> what? You know, I, I make the simplest of requests 
to you and you move as slowly as you possibly can. You know, it, it just, it's not normal, but it becomes normal if mm -hmm. the culture of the school condones it. But if the culture of the school says, well, that's not who we are. What do we say all the time? It's who we are to what we do. We're polite to one another. I, and every kid knows this, I will never go past anybody, colleague or kid, in the corridor, yard, anywhere, without saying, hello, how are you, are you well? You know, any merits, any golden tickets, whatever it might be, but building that little connection. Um, is that thing? I always go on about relationships and then some, some people go, oh, you, know, you can't build everything upon relationships. But what I'm saying is the relationships in school should be, I'm your boss, I'm the kind, all the adults actually, we're all your boss, kids, the adults are always the boss. Um, Never doubt that. We're the kindest bosses you're ever going to meet. Got to be honest, you'll find that in time. But we are your boss. And this is a place of work. And you're going to learn loads and loads and loads. And in my lesson, I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to make sure you learn lots. You leave my lesson up to 60 minutes feeling clever. There you go. And when we see each other anywhere, the corridor, yard, anywhere, we'll always be looking polite to one another. And if I don't like your facial expression or your body language or your tone of voice, I'll say, oh, try that again. Didn't sound very polite. So, but you've got to pick it up. Right. Okay. So, um, and, and you sort of alluded to the idea that maybe this sort of stems from the way, you know, other practices in schools, the way teachers are observed, uh, maybe the interactions, but, you know, the hierarchical nature of schools, perhaps. I mean, this... teachers are desperate to please, aren't they? Teachers are desperate to please SLT very often. Um, you've got knows. I mean, how many years have you been teaching? Uh, I started in the late 90s. So I've got... There you go. So 97, right. How many ridiculous thoughts have we seen? Right. And, and we knew they were ridiculous. Wow. We knew they were apt. Well, I knew. You did, Barry. I, I'm I afraid did. I didn't always know. I think most of us had an inkling that a lot of this was bull, right? We may have thought some of them were okay. But I think a lot of us went, oh, bloody hell, I'm being observed. I do the song and dance routine. Yeah. Door shut, nobody's watching. I'll teach properly again. Right? Yeah. So we did that. And then you never really develop your own, again, your sense of self-worth, your sense of exploring your own subject knowledge. I think we should be, again, when I started teaching, when you started teaching, nobody used PowerPoint. No. It, whereas as time's gone, and nobody had email, can you imagine how much more time you'd have without email? Um, and so, it, you know, once PowerPoint arrived, it was about prettiness. It was about appearance over substance, is how I see it. No. And people think a lot, how many colleagues, how many people have I known in my, in my time, and they were going for, for jobs, for job interviews, or how to do a presentation. No. And they'd ask me advice about different things. Uh, the content of their PowerPoint, Jesus, PowerPoint. And, uh, and I'd say, well, well what, do you, what do you believe in? What do you want the content to be? No, 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 no. Do you like the background? Do you think, do you think the, the picture? Really? Jesus. You know, we've got to move. Appearance over substance is not what it's about. We yeah. should sit there. You know, give me an ordinary whiteboard. Give me a felt pen. And let me teach it. Give better still. I'll create a booklet that I've thought about carefully. But the, the time shouldn't go into the, the pagination and how it looks. The time should go into, mm, what do kids find hard and why? What am I, what can I do differently? What can I do differently? Why is it? I'm the same teacher, hundreds and hundreds of kids pass through my, my hands and they're still making the same mistakes. I'm the common denominator. What can I do differently? That's where I need to think. And, I think instead we've been observed and we've been tick boxed and we've been told um, you're a good teacher if you do this. But you know, what passes for amazing teaching in one trust, in another trust will be poo pooed and in another trust will be laughed at. So again, we forget all of that. Yeah, no, I mean, one of the things I've definitely uh, thought for quite a while is that it's very, very easy to move between different contexts and you felt like a great teacher where you were and you moved somewhere new. It's very easy to make somebody feel rubbish. Uh, and then when you feel rubbish, it's very easy to become rubbish. Um, and, and it's much, much harder to do it the other way, Barry. Or at least this is, much less common. This is why I want people to think, okay, I'm an English teacher, I'm a maths teacher, I'm a science, I'm a French teacher. What do kids find hard and why? What do I really want to get out of this lesson? How do I want, what do I want them to remember? People don't think enough about that. What do I want kids to remember? Because if they don't remember stuff, you can't build on it. No. And then every lesson you come in and as if, as if nothing ever happened in the last lesson. I want to, I was talking about sort of an 80-20 principle. I'm always recycling pretty much 80% of what I've done before with a little bit new added. 
And then even the new that I add, I'm demonstrating the kids, well, it's not really you, you know. Same old letters, same old patterns. Ah, and then they rapidly, they start believing in themselves. But that's because I'll invest my energy in thinking about the, the peculiarities of my subject, uh, my subject and, uh, and what kids find difficult about. So um, let's go. Let's go back a little bit. So you were, we were you were talking earlier about um, uh, about the, the change in the culture of the school and looking at teaching having to be done in tandem. But yeah. if we if we think about these things separately and acknowledge that they must be done in tandem, but how do you get the culture of a school right? What are the sorts of things? You know, you, Barry, you're stepping into a new school, uh, and and it's you know it's not necessarily a complete mess, but it's not exactly where you'd want it. W where would you start? What are the sort of things that you look at? I mean, when I started the charter, yeah, uh, I was the 10th head in 10 years. Uh, it was, in some ways, maybe that made it easy for me because the, the teachers were on their knees. And obviously, they were cynical because <laughs> how many head teachers with how many initiatives? None of them worked. Um, you know, and, and people were at a, at a pretty low ebb. You've got to win your staff over. They've got to believe in you. They've got to trust you. Um, when I was a charter, would I do it again like this? I don't know, but I, I taught a lot. I can't remember how much of my peak. I think there were phases when I had to do sort of 16 hours a week for various reasons. That's not what I would advocate. Um, they, they could see, yeah, yeah, they can teach. You can teach. Um, that helps a lot. You're the head teacher. You should know what good teaching looks like. Um, they knew I would be in lessons a lot. Um, I'd be, can I stop you there, miss? I just want, can I demonstrate something? And I'd be showing people how to teach a lot. Now, I'm not an English expert, maths expert, science expert. So I'm not talking about subject knowledge so much, but I can, I'm savvy enough to know when time is being wasted. I'm savvy enough to know when activities don't work. Um, and so I would jump in and I'd demonstrate stuff. And if I came to your lesson and I'd show you how to do stuff, you weren't going to get a snotty email afterwards telling you your crap. That was it. If you want to talk about it some more, come and talk about it some more. I'll jump in your lessons, I'll demonstrate. You've got the win staff over staff. I've got to feel that you've got their back. Um, that's fundamental. Um, then you've got to, all the stuff, you, you look at what the, the, the status quo is in the school. You look at the stuff. There's only finite time, okay? So yep. when we're spending time doing stuff that isn't useful, what are we not doing? And also when you're doing stuff that's not useful, it's draining. If people know it's not useful, it's draining, it's frustrating. So you strip away the stuff that's not useful. Um, and, I, and I said from the beginning, look, we're, we're reclaiming the school. I want you to enjoy your job. I want you to go home tired. I do. I'll always say some people won't like it. Um, if you come in at half past seven and you leave at half past five, you'll be tired, but you shouldn't be doing anything else. And, uh, and I want you to be tired, but in a good way when you leave at the end of the day. Knackered, but proud of what you've achieved. Not knackered because, oh shit, I have to spend lots of time doing, doing stuff that you really don't see the impact. Right. So you talk there about, about trust, Barry, and lots of guff, I think, is met. you've talked about trust in, in mm. leadership in general and in school leadership. But it sounds what you're saying there is that the, the key to trust is being trustworthy. It is, and it's going to take time, isn't it? With any relationship, it takes time to build trust. So my new school, obviously, I arrived, you know, here I am, uh, loud, and, uh, and people think, bloody hell, he's confident. Um, and so it takes time to build trust. Um, you go in, you help people, they realise there is no hidden agenda, you get, what you get is what you see. Uh, I want the school to run better, I want you to be a better teacher, I want you to be a happier teacher. I want the kids to, to treat you with respect and you to be nice with them. That's it, it's no more complicated than that. So it's, so, uh, forgive me here Barry, but so, so turning around behaviour, the culture of the school is as simple as being nice to other people and they'll be nice back. It's as simple as knowing what you believe in. Okay, go Look on. At, now, what, what is the success of Michaela? It's because Catherine knows what she believes in. It's that simple. She knows what she believes in. She will not veer anywhere. She's, come on, not in, that, that's not intransigence. That's not being stubborn. That is, you adapt, you change your ideas, because But she knows what is, what, what's guiding her, her guiding light. I'm the same, right? Charter work because I know what I believed in. And when you're being criticised, mm. it could be tempting, couldn't it? I'm being criticised from left. You know, people talk about imposter syndrome, don't they? I'm being criticised from left to right. Da, da, da. Maybe I'm not up to this. Maybe I'm not good enough. Um, maybe I should change path. And I'm going to go, no, I know what I believe in. I'm going to stick with what I believe in. Now, if people don't like that, fine. Fine. You know, no jobs forever. But I'd rather do what I believe in than 
do what will placate others if I don't really believe in it. I want those staff to be safe and happy. I want those kids to come to school and feel proud of themselves and proud of their school and learn a lot. It's all I'm interested in. And if anything diverts me from that, then I'm not going to do it. Okay, so what, what's the, are systems important? Do we need... Do God, we, yeah. yeah, okay. So tell us a bit about the sort of systems we need to make that happen. Right, so what, what do I... What do we, it's the way you talk to kids. You train staff how they talk to kids as well. What do we talk about? We talk about slant, so we use slant. Slant may, at the moment, be, be unfashionable. But yeah, I mean, I always say to the kids. I say, it's just an I acronym. Say, it's, it's the thing itself. If you don't like the acronym, change the acronym. Well, I, it's, what does the opposite look like? Yeah. Okay, so you're not sat up straight. You're st actually, you know what the opposite looks like? The opposite looks like a lot of schools have been in. It's like this. They are all worse. Or worse, yeah. So you sprawled across your desk. How rude yeah. is that? Would Would you do that? Would you do that in a job interview? Would you? I mean, come on, it's just crazy. You're not listening. You're not listening. You're not asking and answering questions. You sat there picking your nose, doing a homemade tattoo of your own, whatever you're doing. Text but you're not listening, and you're not sitting up. Uh, you are interrupting because we we use N for never interrupt. Um, so you are interrupting, and you're not looking at the teacher. You're looking anywhere else but. Well, no, I can't have that. And I'll say to kids, listen, kids, ladies and gents, I always call them ladies and gents, and I'll say, why do I call you ladies and gents? Because you're special. You're top of the pyramid. You're not like other people, right? Remember, we're special. There are very few of us at the top of the pyramid. Now, that's something that comes back from my dad and my family history and all the rest of it. I want those kids to think, oh, I'm something special here. I'm something special. So there's all that culture. But the slant thing is, it's easy. Ladies and gents, can you just fold your arms? Great, thank you. Because I know it's, it's really tempting to fiddle. It's really tempting to fiddle. And if you think you're going to fiddle, can you just put your pens and pencils, just move them away a bit. Thanks very much. It isn't about beating kids over their head. And I think some teachers find that difficult to understand as well. Okay. Um, I'll, say, I'll often say to kids, listen, it's after lunch. You're tired. We're all tired after lunch. We all want to sleep after lunch. Come on, sit up straight. Fold your arms. Ask and answer questions. Get involved. It'll stop you falling asleep. We all want to fall asleep after lunch. It's human. Steps. We talk about steps all the time. We always call people certain ways. I used to call it, uh, I probably call it the McKenna full stop, but I certainly called it the charter full stop, and now we call it the HNS full stop. Um, you say certain miss, certain miss at the end of a sentence. It's polite. I often call, I would, I probably call you, sir, when we have a conversation. I probably called you, sir, already. God knows how many times. I call, you know, God, I've got teacher friends that I've known for years. I call them certain miss. It's weird. Because we're teachers, we're just very old. Um, I, I want kids to call us Sir and Miss. It's normal. I often call them Sir and Miss. And it's a clear marker if somebody's being rude. It's a clear marker. Oh, did I get the HS full stop? Oh, sorry, sir. Or the curl they let. You know, I want to thank If I'm handing out resources, I want to thank you. I often don't mention that. And I might be four or five kids, I'm telling them something or other. And then the fifth kid says thank you. And I'll go, You're the first person that said thank you. Then every other kid afterwards says thank you. We say excuse me, we say please. Like I said before, we're smiley, we're positive when we meet people. We don't meet people. You know how so many kids practice that face like a slap dog? Right? No, stop being so bloody grumpy. Nobody wants to work with glump, grumpy people. Nobody. So don't be grumpy. So I, re so I really get that. But, um, so, you know, you obviously, you, you, you're working in a new school and you want to embed that as a, as a, as, as a norm. But... And, and there are teachers that you're working with that like the sound of it, they like the cut of your jib, that all sounds really, really positive. And they go into the classroom and they try asking for the full staff and the kids in their classroom curl their lips and don't give them what but they every need morning you're them. teaching that. Every day, in every season, what do I always say to staff again? Break time, lunch time. We don't stand and talk to each other. We mingle with the kids. We're having interactions with the kids. Lesson change of us. Hello, how are you? Any golden tickets? Any merits? You're interacting with the kids. And every time you pick up, if there's body language, facial expression, pardon me, tone of voice, if there's something that just doesn't feel right, you pick it up. I didn't sound very polite. Did you remember the h and full stop? Good lad. Yeah? Every time the kids ask you, how are you doing, sir? Do you have a nice weekend? So, oh, that's very h &S. Thank you very much. Every morning when we, we I did this at Charter, um, we do this now at h &S. We gather, obviously it's all bubbles now, but we gather the kids together. We say, ladies and gents, just a reminder, what today, what, how are you going to get merits? How are you going to get golden tickets? What we're looking for? And it's CPD every morning as well. Teachers, this message is for you. Remember how we start our lessons. We remind pupils of this, this, and this. 
So the message is constantly, constantly over communicated. Right. This is what we do and this is who we are. And we got the, as the leadership, you have to be incredibly, what am I always talking about? Being a pantomime teacher. Yeah. You've got to be incredibly obvious in what you're selling. And you've got to make sure that every other teacher is consistently selling the same message. Um, it's not complicated. Yeah, you have a, a demerit, one demerit, two demerits as a detention, three demerits would be on call. You have that kind of system. Um, but you know, you've, you've got to look at the front end. Where did it go wrong? It went wrong when you said, hello, Johnny, how are you today? Hello, David, how are you today? And you hardly gave me a response. You didn't make eye contact for me. Oh, David, try that again. I'm very well, thanks, sir, is the answer. How are you today, David? I'm very well, thanks, sir. Oh, you sound miserable. Try it again. Don't be so grumpy. Now I'll always say, kids, if you're worried about something, tell us, right? If you're worried about something, tell us about it. But don't be grumpy. Because if I'm having a bad day, can I walk around school yeah. being a miserable bugger? I can't, right? So the show must go on, you smile, you get on with it. Okay, so, I mean, I, it's not that I disagree with you at all, Barry, but I'm sort of pushing back on this, this a little bit. So I'm, I'm a parent of two teenage girls, and, you know, they're a little bit grumpy sometimes and, uh, and you know, and I'll, and I'll do, I'll, I'll do those kinds of things, you know, that you're being a bit, you're being all of that. And ultimately they, uh, sometimes they'll slam the door and they'll stride off and they'll, you know, they'll act out because they're, because they're kids and they, they do that sometimes. Uh, and that's at home with their parents. I think kids What do we do when they do sorry. that? What, when they do that, when they, when they don't give you what you want, when they, when you've asked them, oh, you sound a bit grumpy, do it again. And they go, you know, F off and they, and they, and they, and they walk off. What do well, you there's lots of questions. That, if that's the culture of the school, there's lots of questions there about the culture of that school. You have to change that culture. But yeah, if a kid's going to tell somebody F off or somebody's blatantly rude, they're going to be put in the isolation room. Right. Okay. There you go. They'll go in the isolation room. They'll stay there. What we do is you give me some work to do. Uh, you do it for half an hour. And at the end of that half an hour, if your um, work rate has been good and, and, and your body language is good, your facial expression is good, your tone of voice is good. Okay. Then we can think about you going back lessons. Right. Um, but you're going to have to apologise as well. Cause like, and, and I'm going to have that conversation. Whoa, whoa. I don't talk to you like that. None of us talk to you like that. We're the kindest bosses you're ever going to have. So you don't talk to us like that. Right. Why should we be treated with less respect than we treat you? Come on. It's a two-way street here. Okay. And they've got to appreciate that. And if we, if we collude with children as they slam doors and they stamp around, they're unemployable. They're unemployable. You know, if a kid won't be polite to you, then how is he even going to get a job flipping burgers? It's not. So we're doing that kid a massive disservice. It, it comes with time. Look, when kids push back, it's because they stand a chance of winning. Period one, right? Little David, period one, he's always nice with that teacher. Period two, he's a little kid. Because he knows he can get away with it with that teacher. Period three, he's good again. Period four, he's rude with that teacher. Kids pick and choose because of the nature of the teacher in front of them. So you have to create a culture where teachers are consistent, they use the systems, they sell their subject, they teach well, and all those factors have to be addressed. And, and we pick up on the little things, we pick up on the little things. So if I say slant and you're not folding, and you're deliberately, you're holding a pen as you fold your arms. I know you tried it on. Johnny, put the pen down please, cheers. So you pick up, it's vigilance. It's okay. vigilance, I remember as a kid myself, I remember, and this is, God, this is Newcastle and sometime in the uh, mid-1970s, early 1970s, and uh, teacher, Miss Swan, um, telling me to fold my arms, but no, I think she said to us, pens down, fold your arms, and I folded my arms with my pen in my hand, and I know, I'm looking at her thinking, does she know I've got a pen in my hand? Ha, ha, I've won. That's what kids do. So we have to be vigilant. Okay, okay. And that was a nice kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned there also about, um, about, about you've mentioned merits and, and golden tickets and that sort of thing. So obviously, praise and rewards are an important part of uh, a system you put in. Relationships are the crooks on there. It's, it, it's praise and reward when it's, hello, David, how are you doing? You're right. Oh, that's, is that a new haircut? Looking very smart. They love these shiny shoes, very h and Good luck. Took your shirt, go on, took it all the way around. Or when, when, if a kid hasn't done his tie properly, and I'll always go, look, don't tell me, because I never do the top button on my shirt, right? But you can't tell, because the way I do my tie. And I'll say, look, don't tell me about it now. Shh, 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 just between us. Look, my top button's not done, but look how I've done my tie. Look, you can't tell, can you? Go on, do it properly. 
So you build relationships all the time. You're giving them attention. You see them in the corridor, you see them in the yard. Do you have any merits yet? Oh, come on. No, none yet. None yet. That's the answer. Well, you could have it and get at least two this afternoon. Any golden tickets? And when you make a fuss about merits and golden tickets, then they come running towards you. Come, say, say, look at this. I've got a golden ticket. If you're the teacher that never mentions golden tickets, well, they know that those golden tickets or merits have no value to you. Okay. Historically, I've never really valued all these point systems, da da da, because I've never seen them work. It wasn't until Michaela that I saw them working because we applied it. And so a chart, you've got to add teachers because you teachers, you know, you're busy. You, you forget, you don't go get around to putting all the stuff on the, on the computer. But it works. We did a chart, we're doing HS. Yeah, you're going to have to know stuff. Of course you are, because people are busy. But having that little bit of code is nice. Having that interaction with you can tell the teacher's interested in you. Why do we, want, we learn lots of like a chart that we did it at HS? We do it. The kids are memorizing poetry. The teachers are memorizing poetry. The teachers are walking around the yard. They, they, they're giving kids, um, now we're, we're learning Charge of the Light Brigade. They, they're getting sent the kid, look, there's, there's Charge of the Light Brigade. Test me. The kids are testing the teachers. All that attention. And the teacher's getting it wrong. And the kids are loving it. The teachers get it wrong. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. You can't buy that. That's the relationships. So, you know, you can, Chris, I could, I could give you a, well, I'm never going to give you a lecture with a PowerPoint slide, but I could give you a lecture on culture with a PowerPoint slide. PowerPoint slide isn't culture. It's, it's human interactions right. built upon genuine mutual respect. So do you have an equivalent, uh, you know, the things you're talking about that you value, the reward systems work because of the way you value them and talk to yeah. the kids about them. Do you have some, some equivalents that you use with staff? Um, do, 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 do. I mean, as, as a trust now at my current school, SLT give, give postcards out on a regular basis to, to teachers. Yeah, to teachers. Yeah. Um, something we did at Charter, we did at Michaela, we haven't started doing here yet. Is at the end of a half term, we get the kids to do appreciation cards mm. uh, to teachers, seeing how much you appreciate them. I think that's a nice thing. That's a nice thing. I need to do that at HNS. I haven't started doing that yet. Um, you know, sincerity goes a hell of a long way. I'll come into your lesson, I'll help you. I'll show you how to teach better. I'll show you how to make better resources. Um, a kid's an awkward kid, and I'll help you with that awkward kid, and I'll make sure that kid does go through the system and, and isn't sent back into your lesson after half an hour to disrupt your lesson. I'm on your side. I'll show you how to make your life easier. And that comes with just trust and time. Yeah, I don't need gimmicks, really. So, uh, yeah, no, I mean, you, you've talked uh, quite a lot about the idea of things. <laughs> you've talked quite a lot, Aaron. <laughs> so in the past, in the past, you've talked quite a lot about, about warm strict. And people often talk about, you know, think of strict as, you know, teachers sort of frowning at kids and being stern. And, but you're, and I think you're embodying it in this conversation. Your version of strict, strictness is about not tolerating anything other than what you think is good enough. And being I mean, strict, strict is such a loaded word, isn't it? Yeah. Strict is such, you know, the fact that, uh, yeah, I expect kids to do as they're told. Yeah, because the adults are the boss. There you go. I don't think that's strict. Ladies and gents, tracking me, please. Thank you very much, ladies and gents. My hand is raised, your hand is raised. I'm in a standing slant, you're in a standing slant. Thank you very much, ladies and gents. I don't think that's onerous. I don't think that's, um, that's, that's me being a Martin Met. Um, you know, in, in, in a break time, lunch time, if we want silence, we just raise our hand really, really slowly. And everybody just raises their hand really, really slowly. Not a single word is said. I fold my arms, they all fold their arms. Thank you very much, ladies and gents. And I'm calling you ladies and gents. And I've got your undivided attention. And what, what is wrong with that? You can't have 30 human beings being led, and it is leadership, being led by another human being, if that, those 30 human beings aren't willing to do what they're told. You know, ladies and gents, at my signal, can we pick up a pen, write the date and title, and let's get on with those first 10 questions. Thank you very much. And that's what it should be. It's their place of work. And if they do as they're told, they will leave that lesson going, whoa, I didn't think I could do that, but I'm really good at that. So, it's so, not strict. No, no, but, uh, but, but obviously, um, you know, in a lot of people's minds, you know, you've, you've had flack over the, over the years for sort of being this, this sort of, oh, in but people's minds, this flack, come on. But there would have been a million and one things I've said in this conversation. Ah, did you hear that? Mm, let's take that apart. Ah, evil. Oh, do I care? 
you know, look, anyone that's seen me working with kids knows the relationship that I have with kids um, and knows the relationship I have with staff. And if they don't like it, fine. You know, I'm, I'm not here to please everybody. Uh, it doesn't interest me. If you're pleasing everybody, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. I suspect you're not being sincere to yourself. And all I want to do, as I said before, I want to be, I want to be proud of what I do. I want the staff to be proud of what they're doing. And I want the kids to be proud of what they're doing. So it's, it's that simple. It's that simple. Okay. I mean, I know from my own experience, so, you know, and, and, and because I think I really, I really hear what you're saying about it being simple, but I don't think it feels simple for teachers on the ground. You know, I've, I've gone back into the classroom after, after eight years. And so I'm working in some schools where they've, uh, they're, they're making real commitment to trying to sort out behavior and to try and support teachers in so that they can teach. And, and that, and that's really, that makes a big difference, but it can, it can st- still be hard and it's still the case you know that you're a face children don't know and their instinct is to try it on their instinct is to is to push back as and to find out how much they can get away with and uh, and it feels hard sometimes and and so i you know i completely i completely get what you're saying it's it's that simple but how do we make it how do we get to, it, it, it's even simpler the problem is i think it's even simpler for teachers just to tolerate things that you probably wouldn't and want. that's the culture that the, the the senior leadership team have to create you have to be saying to staff listen of course it's easy to tolerate of course it's easy to turn a blind eye of course it's easy to see that awkward kid think, oh, I'm, I'm going to look the other way but we mustn't ever do that so that constant message is there all those assemblies that i give on a daily basis they're cpd sessions i'm telling giving the same message to kids the same message to teachers remember teachers we don't tolerate this and teachers remember to log your golden tickets please it's really important remember teachers right this is how we do this this is how we do this this is how we do this. children remember your teacher's words are gold dust god i've had a pound for every time i've said that so i'm telling the kids every day do you know how many thousands of grade nines your teachers have got it may not be true I'm going to tell the kids that. Do you know your teacher's words are gold dust? Do you know your teachers have good... Your teachers could work anyway, but they choose to work here because they see your potential. So I'm constantly building on that. And right. I want the teachers to believe that of themselves. Yeah. And if I know teachers having uh, difficulties, well, regardless, I'm around constantly. You know, Christ, I'll do 17,000 steps a day. I'm constantly on the pro. Make every break time, every lunch time, every morning assembly. And that's how you build up. The teachers all use the same language. It's, it's, it's a script of sorts. It's quite funny, actually, because um, I hear teachers at HMS talking just like teachers at Charter now. And it, it just, I love it. It just makes me smile. I mean, it's who we are. It's what we do. Um, uh, we're not ordinary. We're extraordinary. Because they're the messages that we're giving the kids. Because I want them to believe that about themselves. I want the teachers to believe that about themselves. Um, and that's what you do. You build, but it's it, it, it's in every, it's imbued in everything you do. The culture. It isn't a PowerPoint. It isn't a CPD session. It is how you live, act, walk, talk, breathe. Right. Okay. It can't be an add-on. It has to be. Look at again. If anybody visits Michaela, it's in everything you do. We're seeing the charter, and it's why I'm trying to develop now as well. So if I was to boil this down, um, it sounds like um, you you could maybe uh, arrive at. It's relentless vigilance and cheerfulness. I say you have to be visible, you have to be vigilant, and you have to be warm, which looks yeah. like two Ws. It's VVW. You've got to be vigilant, you've got to be visible, you can't be cellophane. And warm. Hello, how are you doing? Do you have a nice weekend? Good lad. Oh, a new haircut? Look smart. Vigilant, visible, and warm. Okay, that seems to, that seems to sum it up pretty well. Barry, thank you ever so much for uh, welcome, giving sir. us the, the, the simple secrets of what it is to have a great culture in a school. And uh, I hope we can talk to you again at some other point about um, what, you're, what you're getting up to next. But thanks ever so much. Thank you very much, sir. Pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.